Okay, so now that I've color corrected everything, I've cut out everything cleanly, we have a, a really functioning landscape. I can actually use my crop tool and decide on my final composition now. That will save a lot of memory. I don't need to keep any of this stuff anymore. Hit return. I can turn off my guides by hitting command semicolon. And I can see my vertical composition here. I have foreground, I have middle ground, I have background. I want to check my edges. You see how they're a little white right there? So that means I'm going to push my guides in a little bit using the move tool. My computer catches up with me. Just nudge them a little bit. The more you zoom in, the more you can nudge them. I got to go above that white. I don't want that printing. So always check your edges when you're refining. Okay, so those edges look good. And then your crop tool will stick to your guides. And then you hit return. And you see how I have checked here, delete cropped pixels? That really saves my memory. That means all the stuff that was out here, the computer doesn't have to remember anymore. It's deleted them. So now I have an actual landscape. I know exactly you know, how it works, what factors. It's made up of these different layers. I have these extra things I didn't use. And if I want to save space, I can delete those layers I'm not using. But I want my sketch in there. And this is what happened. There's my sketch. And then my piece got bigger than just the sketch. Filled in more. I don't think I need this one anymore. All right, so I'm gonna save it there. That's a lot cleaner, saves quickly. Its resolution, if I view it at 100%, is huge, right? This can print really well, pretty large, at least 11 by 14, if not bigger. Because we did it at 350 and 11 by 14 minimum, that means we can actually print it 16 by 20 at a high enough resolution that it would look professional which is about as big as we can go in this class. So what can we do now? Well, it just feels all a little too sharp and all a little too flat because everything's cut out, everything's color corrected. So how do I get it to look like the water's kind of weaving between the foreground, middle ground, and background? I need some texture. So I'm gonna to go to Google again, Google Images. Chrome is being weird, but, and I'm going to do an image search for what's called a texture fill. But you can use anything for this. Basically, the thing you use for this is like fog and mist. But because I'm underwater, I'm going to look for underwater texture fill. Uh, designers sometimes just put these out there so that you can use them. And some of them are cheesy as anything, right? Like this stuff. But if I set the settings in the tools to large, I'll start to see, like this one's pretty nice for me. In if this wasn't underwater, it would be like the equivalent of fog and mist. So what do they have underwater? It's, it's, I think it's krill, clouds of krill. So I've saved this, or I've opened up this one, and I can say those bubbles are a little cheesy. Um, open image and new tab. And the size is okay for that. So let's find another one. 
instead of calling it a texture fill, I'm going to call it a krill cloud. <laughs> Ooh. I do not know if I'm spelling krill correctly. Or I think they call it um, undersea snow or something like that. So let's try underwater snow. Like all this little little filters. This might be a good one. Like dust that you see in the air when the light's flowing through a window. I just want those kind of textures that are going to give more life to my scene. And yet have them not be like identifiable bubbles or something. So here we go. Here's a nice light filter. Texture fill. So I've got a few. So let's see. Open image and new tab. Same thing. You want as high quality as you can get. You want to go right to it. So I'm going to open image and new tab. View it at full size. So that's not that big. This one already looks shady. Let's see. Open image a new tab. Yeah, there's some nice ones. There's some nice rain fills. This is a site that's just like Pixabay, but it's not what I'm a member to, so I'm not going to bother right now. And that's too small. And that's too small. So these are interesting. So I'm going to drag these off onto my desktop, even this small one, because texture fills are actually, they tend to be pretty um, soft. So having high resolution is not priority number one. We're going to be using them at low opacities and only one came over. Oh no, here we go. Okay, so let's see what these do. And then I'll just do a typical one. Even though this is underwater, I'll show you what I usually do. I usually do a like fog, mist, texture, fill as an image search. Google is taking a lot longer than it should. You know, this kind of thing. Large. It's very helpful. And honestly, this will work underwater just as well as it works in anything else. It's a, another element for us to use. Okay, I'm going to save that. Okay. So now, how do we use them? Go to our very top layer, and then we bring them in. So I'll show you the most basic one, most ready to use one. You just drag and drop, it comes in as a smart object, and then you stretch it to cover your whole landscape. Come on. So, how can I stretch this to cover my whole landscape? Well, I can just stretch it up and down. But I don't want these really sharp bubbles, so I'm also going to stretch it off to the side. All right, so maybe something like that. Hit return. Okay, then how do you make it kind of glazed onto your piece? Well, I'm going to take the opacity way down of that layer. And already that makes it look more and more like it's underwater, right? without doing anything else, just playing with the opacity. Now I can use command left bracket or I can just drag and drop it down beneath my layers. So maybe I want it over everything a little bit, but a lower opacity. And that's a one way a texture fill can work. It glazes everything together into the same world. I can also try a different setting like soft light or pin light. 
pin light's working pretty well at a low opacity. This kind of washes all the colors together a little bit more. So it's more believable as, a, as one setting. Okay, let's bring in this kind of crazier texture fill on top of that. And again, stretch it big. I don't want that land mass in there so much. It's going to be soft and crazy, right? Take the opacity way down. And now let's put that, you know, behind some of these layers, like there. And then let's try a blending mode like pin light right? or soft light. The soft light works a little better for that one, and then I can play with the opacity. But it's still a little too sharp. But I like how it's kind of breaking it up. See, so without it. So what if I want to soften it a little bit? Well, if I rasterize it, because usually texture fills are not sharp edged, they're soft edged. I can go up to filter and just like I sharpened before, I can blur. And this is the only filter we're going to consistently use. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Because the computer is very good at, at taking away focus. So I want to blur it to about that degree. It's very bad at sharpening. It's very good at taking away focus. Okay, then I'm going to use this smoke overlay. I'm going to make it kind of nice and big. And I'm going to set it, this is why overlay comes in, at overlay mode. Right? And then try pin light. And then try soft light. Soft light seems to be the way. I'm going to stretch it. It goes over everything. And then I can play with its opacity and I can play with it going up and down through the layers. Where is it most helpful? Maybe there. Separates the front from the back. So I did quite a few with texture fills. All this sending forward and backwards. That was before I did anything. That's with all the texture fills. It helps to bring all the colors together, make it all seem like it's in the same place. It's basically adding atmosphere. But if I want to take away focus a little bit, if I really want to mess with this, well, let's just find, well, let's just see. Um, Instead of calling it texture fills, let's just call it, like I'm just going to look up sea fog. I just want to find photo of fog, right? That's nice and big that I can use. And if that doesn't work, something we're going to be doing a whole project with, just clouds. I want to find some interesting kind of texture filled clouds like this maybe it's huge that's very nice high resolution Let's see if it actually works open image a new tab no it doesn't work of course it doesn't work way too easy let's try this one this one looks promising. Open image a new tab. There we go. Save it to the desktop. Minimize Chrome. Bring the cloud in over the top of everything. Stretch it. Texture fill. Just stretch, stretch, stretch. Okay, move it up in front. Let's uh Flip it vertically. Let's flip it horizontally. There we go. Let's take the opacity way down. Ah, that's that's what I'm talking about. So now let's play with layers.